There's this ongoing feud within the GOP that seems to be escalating now. It's fueled by new comments from Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who compared mask wearing to the Holocaust. You know, we can look back in a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. CNN's Suzanne Malveaux walks us through this. As the Senate goes into session this week with little or no chance to passing a bipartisan bill calling for an independent commission investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol, the parties most vocal are taking on each other over the issue as to whether or not Republicans to tell the truth can be honest about not only the current events of the day, but also history as well. Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who was recently ousted in her number three position in the House and has since embraced her new role as the standard bearer for her party, calling out Trump's lies. She is now taking on freshman Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene for her recent comments comparing the House's ongoing mass mandate to the Holocaust. Green said on the Christian Broadcasting Network show, The Water Cooler, quote, we can look back at a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. Well, Jewish groups immediately demanded that Green retract her statement as well as apologize, tweeting this, saying you can never compare health-related restrictions with yellow stars, gas chambers, and other Nazi atrocities. Such comparisons demean the Holocaust and contaminate American political speech. Saturday, Congresswoman Liz Cheney also weighing in, tweeting this, saying this is evil lunacy. Cheney is one of the few Republicans who's calling on her Senate colleagues to support this bill for this independent commission on the January 6 attacks on the U.S. Capitol. But most in the Senate, those Republicans saying this is dead on arrival. Chrissy Boris. Suzanne, thank you so much. Now, after what are deemed very insensitive comments comparing mask mandates to the Holocaust, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene didn't apologize when speaking to a reporter yesterday. Rather, she doubled down. We shouldn't be having this kind of treatment. No one should be treated like a second-class citizen for saying I don't need to wear a mask or saying that my medical records are my privacy based on my HIPAA rights. And so I stand by all of my statements. I said nothing wrong. And I think any, any rational Jewish person didn't like what happened in, in Nazi Germany, and any rational Jewish person doesn't like what's happening with overbearing mask mandates and overbearing vaccine policies. Do you understand, though, why some would be upset and offended by the comment? Well, do you understand how people feel about being forced to wear masks or being forced to have to take a vaccine or even have to say that whether they've taken it or not? These are just things that shouldn't be happening in America. This is a free country. Anita Kumar with us now, White House correspondent and associate editor for Politico. Anita, it is so good to have you back here. So, first of all, um, I want to listen to what Republican Congressman uh, Carlos Jimenez said to Jim Acosta last night. Obviously, I disagree wholeheartedly with that, that response. You know, the Holocaust, Holocaust is a tragic event uh, that uh, uh, incredibly painful to, uh, to the Jewish community here in the United States and around the world. Six million Jews died because of it. Uh, nobody's going to die for, uh, because we're wearing masks. We had Liz Cheney, as uh, Suzanne had said, calling it evil lunacy. We had Republican uh, Adam Kinzinger saying it was absolute sickness. Uh, and then we had Re Representative Jim McGovern in a tweet saying this, Representative Green's anti-Semitic language comparing the system systematic murder of six million Jews during the Holocaust to wearing a mask is beyond disturbing. She's a deeply troubled person who needs to apologize and resign at GOP leader, meaning Kevin McCarthy, uh, needs to address her anti-Semitism. Are you getting word, Anita, that there's any indication uh, the... Uh, Leader McCarthy will actually address this or that there will be any consequence for the, the words that she's using? 
Well, you're right. We haven't heard from the from the Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy. I would suspect that he does not want to talk about this. This is it feels like one of the same things we've seen over and over again when um, Marjorie Taylor Greene makes these controversial comments, but not just her. But when when we've heard other controversial comments, it's it's this split in the party where the Republican Party, the leadership of the party, doesn't want to get uh, on one side. They don't want to face uh, the the backlash from some of these supporters that support her, or even President, former President Trump, who who supports her. Uh, obviously, she strongly supports former President Trump. It's this same schism in the party that we've been seeing over and over again. I would not expect a lot of Republicans this coming week to co to talk about that. You will hear from a lot of Democrats, though, obviously. Well, but I mean, between uh, Representative Jimenez, Cheney, Kinzinger, some are certainly coming out. What does this tell you about, really, I, we, we ask it often, but it seems to be a very fluid issue, the state of the GOP. I mean, is there any indication that Marjorie Taylor Greene, specifically in some of the things she says, is causing a, a larger rift than there has been in the past? Yeah, I mean, she's definitely causing that larger grift. I would would mention that some of those people that you've talked about, of course, Liz Cheney and others are, you know, those that always are coming out now, right? They're the ones that are vocal. They're vocal against her. They're vocal against President Trump. So we haven't seen a huge rift. I mean, if we if we see some of these other leaders coming out, that would be something. But you're exactly right. This is exactly what the party does not want. Every time there's a statement like this, every time there's a riff like this, it takes the Republican message away from what they want it to be, opposing President uh, Biden's uh, policies, his tax, tax increase proposals, his spending plans, other things that they don't agree with that they think voters might care about. So, uh, you know, whatever does happen with this particular comment, it is continuing that rift and it's taking the party away from what they want it to be, what they want their agenda to be about. Is there a sense at all that perhaps um, Marjorie Taylor Greene is trying to fill the void that was once the voice of, of President Trump? He said a lot of things that many deemed insensitive, some that were outright wrong, particularly when it came to COVID, particularly when it came to the 2020 election. Um, but the words are getting more brazen. Is there a sense that perhaps she's trying to fill that void because he does not have a Twitter account anymore and he doesn't have a microphone in front of his face 24-7? Right. I mean, you're exactly right. You are hearing from people that that is an issue, that they think that she is trying to do that. Her and a few others, you know, Congressman Matt Gates of Florida, obviously the two of them had a rally that, you know, they support President Trump. Um, they're out there talking about him uh, and supporting him. And look, he's supporting them back. This is what we're going to continue to see over the next, you know, coming months and into next year, into the midterms.